This time we're going to look at a multimeter with clamp current capabilities from Benlab. Next one we're going to look at is a clamp on meter. Comes with a little carry bag, set of instructions. We'll test this out. I'll take it over to my electrical meter or my electrical panel and we'll check some voltages and currents. So this is a clamp meter. You clamp this around your conductor and it will tell you how many amps are flowing through that wire. First things first, we'll install the batteries. It takes two AA batteries. I'm looking around for some English instructions, but you know, the only part of this instruction manual, <laughs> this is this is a big oops. Okay, here's our instruction manual. Clamp meter, true RMS digital, right? And um, we open it up and it says contents. It's in German, French, Spanish, and Italian. But three years warranty is in English and likewise, the only page that actually has any English on it whatsoever is um, the warranty coverage. Everything else is in the four other languages that are printed in the manual, but no English. I would say someone dropped the ball there. So the manual gets round filed. We'll have to figure out how to work this. I don't think that will be difficult. Comes with a couple probes so you can measure voltage. Plug our probes into the inputs on the bottom measure up to 600 volts okay it's got a non-contact voltage detector as well in that mode and I would imagine that you just hold it near something you won't even need to have the won't even need to have these plugged in if I take this and hold it for non-contact voltage you're using the current detector loop if I bring this near where there's voltage it should start to beep when I get in the vicinity of my live wire. So here we bring it in. Any questions? So in that respect, it works very much like working the same. That's non-contact. Now we can put this into voltage mode. Twelve point zero nine volts. When you first turn it on, it's in AC mode. Switch it to DC. And there's our reading. Twelve point zero nine. The fluke says 12.02. They're both pretty darn close. My power supply says 12.0, but it's only got tenths of a volt resolution. If we want to check AC voltages, we'll put it into AC mode. Stuff it into the power socket and measure what it reads. One hundred and twenty. Point six. We'll do the same for the fluke. Put it into AC mode. Here we go. 120.1. So it seems to be measuring a little bit higher than the fluke. In ohms mode, it will measure that's just skin resistance, 30 mega ohms. Grab a couple of resistors, we'll measure a couple of known values and check out how accurate it is measuring resistors. Here I have a big old carbon resistor and this is the prime reason why we don't use carbon resistors anymore. Okay, this one here should be 47K, yellow, violet, orange. Four seven and three zeros, 47K. Is it 47K? The fluke says, 
is 52.3K. 51.9. 51.97. As you can see, this one has higher resolution. The Venlab VC600D has one hundredths of an ohm resolution in this mode. It also will do frequency. So if I put it into Hertz mode and plug this into my power, it will tell me the frequency of the AC power, which is 59.97 Hertz. Switching into diode test mode by cycling through the functions to get to diode test, we can test diode junctions. So this diode here is has a 5.57 volt drop in the forward direction and of course it will be open in the reverse direction to 0.57 if we look at the fluke fluke tells me that it's 0.54 but still it's passing current in one direction although most diodes should be a 0.7 volt drop so let me try to find another one this might be a special purpose diode there's a common transistor an NPN measured on the fluke if I put my positive on my base I've got a 0.62 volt drop measured on the fluke on the Venlab 0.642 0.645 but no confirmation beep like I'm used to on my fluke same as if it's shorted it'll just say 0 or 0.1 or whatever 0 there you go fluke will give me a definite beep but this one does have a continuity feature if I switch it to continuity where is it uh, it's that mode that's continuity so if you've got a complete circuit it will beep it will measure temperature as well so I have a little temperature probe that comes with it we replace the probes with the thermocouple and it will measure temperature which is great for if you are building a reflow oven for example and you need to heat it up to a specific temperature you can measure the temperature in Fahrenheit and Celsius where is Celsius here one button for that. Oh, I think it was function. One of the most useful features of a meter like this, however, is measuring current using the non-contact current clamp. So what we do is we just put our, our conductor under load through the current clamp there's an iron core that forms a transformer and any current flowing through a wire passed through here will be picked up just through the induction and will measure the amount of current passing through that wire so to do that we need to go over to the electrical panel open up the electrical panel and clamp onto some wires that are carrying current so I'm going to prep the panel and we'll move the camera over and do a demonstration so here's the electrical panel I'm going to measure the power that my car is using because I can see that it says my meter on here says it's drawing 5 or 15.6 amps which is this breaker right there so I'm just gonna kind of pull these wires out of the way I think it's this one here these two yeah that's it going to this red wire that's going to my car charger and if I just take my meter my clamp on meter and I clamp it on to this wire here oh might help if I'm in the right mode here function is that it there we go 15.83 amps this is now measuring 15.7 that's what's showing on the screen here so it's pretty close 15.83 it's a 16 amp limited charger so my car won't charge at more than 16 amps because it's on a 15 amp breaker so this is a 16 amp charger and as you can see I'm getting 15.85 and that is 
corresponding very nicely with this one. It's now saying 15.8 on the little display here that's wearing out. So as you can see this one varies because it, it just it depends on when it takes a sample. But I'm charging at 3.7 to 3.8 kilowatts is what uh, the car is charging at. Again, this one here, depending on when it takes its sample, because sometimes it'll take the sample on the peak of the voltage, other times it will take the sample as the waveform is dropping down because it's just not a very accurate meter, it's kind of an average, but 15.8 is typically what it's going to be sitting at. And if we look at the other meter here, this one says 15.83. This one's a true RMS. So I'm going to believe this one 15.8 amps with the non-conductive current measurement. If I connect it up to my top breaker, which is actually used for the other car, but it's also used for my electric heat that I use in the workshop here. This is a 20 amp circuit. It's a 20 amp heater. When I flip on the breaker, we should see 20 amps and we do. We see 20.5 amps, which is what this electric heater draws. It's a 20 amp heater. 0.6 amps, that's what my test bench is drawing right now. Of course, the only thing that's turned on on my test bench is there's a monitor that I use for my camera. And my isolation transformer is running, but I've really got nothing else running on the bench, so 0.6 amps is what's being drawn. But just for the hell of it, let's just see what these big wires are, are passing. There shouldn't be anything because the TV and nothing's on. One amp, okay, that's probably the lights and other stuff that's plugged in stuff other than my TV, so the TV must be on this black wire here. It shouldn't have anything on it, which it doesn't. Point 0.3. I think, there's a, I think there's a monitor, a security camera monitor that's running on that one. And uh, what other interesting things can I look at here? I've got some big ones down here, but there's probably nothing much being drawn on them because my heat pump and stuff is not running right now so we're not drawing a lot of power at this time of day here's the garage lights so this is all the lights for my studio right now there are two 85 watt CFL a 65 watt CFL a 42 watt CFL 240 watt linear fluorescence 265 watt linear fluorescence and a 13 watt CFL that's all that's on this circuit. That's drawing 4.8 amps. If I shut down the lights, you will see that number drop. Let's do that. Now you see we've dropped down to 2.9 amps. 2.98. That's turning off 285 watt and 160 uh, it's 165 watt light. If I kill the other lights, I'll have to bring a flashlight in here. So I kill the lights. We're down to 0 0.14. And that would be just for, I think there's a clock running here. There's a clock running on the wall that's on that circuit. And uh, my um, little FM transmitter for my, my little test music, right? That's plugged in. The garage door opener is plugged in, so these are standby. This is what we call phantom voltages. You know, we got everything off, but there's things that are plugged in. So right now there's an electric clock. There's a wall wart. Actually, there's, I think there's two wall warts plugged in. And um, standby voltages for a TV, standby voltages for the garage door opener. And that's what they draw. 0.1 amps, 24 hours a day. These are the things that add up when you've got these little vampire electrical sources, as they call them, little plug-in adapters. All these little things you leave plugged in, like phone chargers and stuff, that just suck up away a bit of power all the time. It adds up over the over the course of the month. So that's a 65 watt bulb that I've just added, and that's got us to one amp. That's a 65 watt. We'll try the 85 watt and see what it draws. That's the 85 watt. Oh, look, 
Maybe it's not 85 watts because it's only drawing 0.6 amps. That's funny because these so-called 85 watt lamps are not as bright as the 65. Do you think they're lying about their current consumption or about their, their number of watts? I believe they are. I'll have to put them on my kilowatt meter and actually see how many watts they're drawing. But the current meter doesn't lie. It's 0.6 amps. I've now turned on, this is a 70 watt it's a metal halide type lamp. It's very bright. It shines right across. It usually shines over my shoulders if I have it on. I don't use this one all the time. But it's shining on the bench from across the other side of the workshop. Let's check out the total power consumption. Then I'll turn everything off but this one and we'll see what this one actually draws. It's probably one of the most efficient lights that I've got, believe it or not, for the amount of light that it throws off. So we're drawing a total 5.37 amps. I'm going to shut everything else off. 0.7. Interesting. 0.7, this is a 70 watt light. It's drawing 0.7, which is about right, which is what it should be drawing. 0.7 amps. So there you have it. The Venlab VC600D digital multimeter with non-contact voltage detection and non-contact current measurement capabilities. Looks to be a pretty good unit from what I've seen during my evaluation. Comes with a nice carry case. Throw that in your tool bag and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Link is in the description.